you'll remember that our SOLCAP data set had data for two years and that the data for those two years was in separate files. So we need to combine those two data sets and we can do this very easily using R. And so the name of our 2010 data set is 2010 OH color sample.xls. We would import that into R the same way that we did for our 2009 data. And now we're ready to combine our data frames or data sets. In order to do this, our data frames need to have exactly the same headers so that R can recognize that they're the same in both data sets. Then we use what's called the row bind or R bind command and combine our two data frames. And we can use a similar type command if we'd like to combine two data sets by column using the C bind command. So now that we have our two-year data, we want to check that data just to make sure everything is correct using the structure command. And we now have data that was collected in one location over two years, and we have a total of three reps. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rename our variables so that they're factors and not treated as integers for ease of our use. And one thing of note is that R will recognize the most recent object name. So if you use the same name multiple times, R will use only your most recent or your latest iteration of that. So we had average green before, just for our 2009 data, and now we're using the name average green for our combined data set. So we may now want to look at a multi-year ANOVA. And in this case, we want to consider rep and year as fixed. And to denote nesting, as in the case of rep and year, we used the, uh, the command or the the syntax percent in percent. To denote interactions, you can use either a colon or an asterisk. And you'll see here a similar ANOVA output as we had for the single year as well as our significance code. And we see here that we have significant effects of line, year, rep within a year, and line by year interactions. So for many plant bleeding applications, we would want to consider our main effects random, and we would want to estimate the proportion of variance due to effects in our experimental design. For example, if we want to estimate heritability. So to look at these random effects, we need to use the LME4 package. So the first thing you, that you'll need to do is to install the LME4 package. The simplest way to do this is using the R menu, click on Packages, Install Package, and then select the package that you would like. And just as a note, there are over 2,000 packages currently available for R. So you only need to install a package once, but you need to load it in every R session you want to use it in. And the reason for this is there are so many packages available that if you were to try to download them all and have them all running every time you were using R, you would crash your system. And so this is why you're required each time you want to use a package, you need to load it and you load a package using the library command. So in this case, we type library LME4. So we use the LMER command, 
within this package to look at our model with random effects. We denote an, an effect as random by entering one, the bar, and then the name of our object. And this LME, LMER command can also be used with mixed models. So in this case, we've denoted all of our effects as random. And so by using the summary command of our model, we can derive the variance components, which can be used to estimate heritability. To learn more about the LME4 package, I would direct you to the online documentation for this package. And this is freely available online. So now, er, in order to do our variance components analysis, we had to combine two data sets. And it may be useful to now export that new data set that combines both of our years. We can do that easily using R by using the write.table command. And we would follow that with the name of our data frame, in this case, combined color. We would type in col.names equals na. And this is very important. Otherwise, your data will not be read into Excel with your headers nicely appearing. And then you type in the name of the file that you would like this combined data set to be named as. And you'll want to use a .txt extension. And then you may open this file using Excel.